forever. Dog. From the spacious Forever Dog Studios in downtown Los Angeles and the satellite Forever Dog Studios in Baltimore, Maryland, this is Groom Zoo. Here's your host, Dan Gillen. <laughs> Let's record a podcast. I fucking dare you, man. I dare you to stop recording this podcast. I dare you to have a great podcast right fucking now, Dan. I dare you, dude. I dare you to stop me from already having a great fucking podcast because we're already going. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dare you to stop anything. I'm gonna. I dare it. Go ahead, make my make my freaking night, dude. Oh, have a boy. great. Oh, Great boy. podcast. Oh, we're getting into one already. This is Groomzilla. I, I, I psyched you out right before the announcements. I got right in your head. You can't I get climbed, in this head. I, cl- I just did. You can't get I, in this head. I literally just did. I'm what fine. I'm no way. fine. I'm sitting here. We're hosting Groomzilla's just like we do every week, which is, of course, you know, the only wedding planning podcast by Grooms for Grooms and everyone in between. Welcome, loyal listenership. Hi, listeners. I got in a dance pot head Whoa, for the pod. Freudian slip. Look out. It's, his, it's Dan's pod. It's Dan's pod, and oh. I climbed right in. I thought you said butt, which is a Freudian slip on my part. I said pot. Oh, see, you heard. Yeah. I wanted to hear that you well, got Well, we in were my talking butt. about cocaine earlier, too. We're always talking about cocaine and how I shoot junk in my arm before every podcast. I'm high on H. Wow. Chasing wow. that. Chasing the elephant? I don't even. I don't even know what you call it. The horses, I think. Yeah, band of horses. Hello. Chasing them. This, is, this is off to a good start, I would say. It's a great. Yeah. Well, I got into your head right before the announcement because you really like to rear up and uh, and really just you know roid out on those announcements hey, and yeah, that, that's not yeah. for me. That's for you the s- wetheads. I don't do that for me. I think you do. I think you do. Well, I mean, in in so much as, you know, any entertainer does something for themselves. You know, you're here for you, partially. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm I'm here for everyone. I'm here, I'm here for everyone but me. It's 11, it's 11, 12. Did right you say now, everyone pod me or everyone but me? <laughs> no, that time I said but with two T's. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure that time. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool, man. <laughs> cool, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think. Dan. I- Dan, you went to a wedding last weekend. Oh, you you want to talk weddings. I went to a big wedding in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Oh, that's nice. I've always wanted to go to Whistler. Whistler. I was in Whistler all weekend long. Did you meet anyone who whistled their S's there? And also, do you like it when people whistle their S's? Because I do. I do. I think it's hilarious, especially if you can do it on command. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really funny. I, I think it's like, I when I hear, when I see someone in a movie or more... Hopefully, better in real life. Uh-huh. Whistle their s's. It really makes me feel like humans are as cool as animals. That because yeah. usually I don't. Usually yeah. I don't. Usually I'm like animals are way cooler. Worse than animals. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we're the worst. Yeah, um, by far. But then it's like when you see like someone a person, I'm mm. like, oh, look a peacock. That's <laughs> that's. Oh, is that the only it. thing, or is that just one thing that that puts us above the animals? Um, it's shit like that. Yeah. It's shit of it's shit of that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uber. Oof. Of that Uber. Oh, you say the oof. Uber. Uber. Uh huh. Oh, I want Arab. See, I go Arab. See, colonialism. I go reverse colonialism. That's I can't a- do a French accent. I'm too Arab. That's okay. La c'est le bon temps roulé. Oh, le bleu. I don't think I said that right, but it's Tabasco's motto. Let the good times roll, and we're letting the good times roll. That's Creole. That's Creole. You're That's Creole. An... Hey, okay. I, I got a I got a Creole question for you. Bad segue. I'm going to move on. Uh, okay. Anyway, going back to Whistler. I, I, yeah, do we? <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about Whistler and S's. Get, can okay. I just say one thing? Get out of my head, because I'm just all over the place already. I can't. I can't. You know me. You know me. When I climb in, I make it, you know, I'm on the couch for at least Get two weeks. Comfortable. I'm crashing. Get I'm crashing. Look at him crash. <laughs> <laughs> I get into people's heads and I crash. I'm um, the Pete Holmes. You're the Pete Holmes of getting into people's um, get, head. Yeah. Uh, I didn't meet anyone who whistled their S's in Whistler to okay. answer your question, but I did meet but, a lot of, I did meet a lot of Australians in Whistler. There's a, there's oh, a, you did? Yeah. I don't know why. There's a lot of them up there. 
Is it? What is the season like right now? And was, is it like? It's heavy, heavy mountain biking season. I think that's the yeah. summer season. Is yeah, a, aggressive downhill mountain biking. Um, Did you just run into a bunch of Aussies, or was there Aussies at the wedding? Was there an Aussie involved in the wedding? Uh, not to do with the wedding so much as the town. They all they all work in all the establishments there. Oh, cool! It's just lousy with Aussies, which you know is fine, but not what you expect when you go up to. I guess I should have expected. Um, thrill seekers. I mean, it's like a thrill yeah. seeking. It's, it's like a, a snowboard town, even sna- yeah. snowboard town, mountain biking town. Yeah. So you're gonna have some Aussies there. The wedding yeah. was great. It was beautiful. Um, the band was phenomenal. Great. Oh, Danny. Danny liked the band. <laughs> Dan likes the band. Hey, All right. Let me tell you, it wasn't just Danny. It was a takeaway for everyone at that wedding. That band. Really. That band was on fire. They were. Uh, Wait. Great. So who got married again? Tell me. A uh, childhood friend of my wife. So I'm okay. I'm a plus one situation up there. Um, I did okay. I you know. How did you handle the plus? How did you handle the plus one? Situation? I always distance myself unnecessarily, and uh, you know, I can get better. You get in that. your own head. You get in your own head. That's why it's so easy for me to get in your head because yeah. you get in your own head for me. Maybe, maybe. Except I'm not as comfortable in my own head as you are. I don't sit on the couch. Yeah, I don't understand that. You're such a fun guy. I'm pacing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I can't sit down. You're in the plumbing. You're in the plumbing is what you're doing. Yeah, I'm checking the pipes. Uh, okay, so so you just so did you so the band did it take you out? Were you already coming out of your head? Were you already trying to be there for your partner in the situation? I got. A, I was not a very good partner at the wedding. I was fine, but looking back, I, I could have done way better. I was just I was yeah. just kind of there, you know. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, I just make all, everything about me. Uh, so, but I, you know, on the exterior, I was, I was pleasant and I was smiling and I was making mm-hmm. small, small talk and mm-hmm. conversation, but I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I, it took me a while to get on the dance floor. Sometimes I'm not comfortable there. Yeah. Um, you are very, very hot. You're very handsome. You're hot. You're sort of famous. I um, disagree with everything you just said, but of course you're going to, of course you're nothing going to, to do with why I wasn't on the dance have floor. To, you have to prop up that fake Midwestern home humility stuff. And you can't just own how cool and hot you are. And you can't just be fucking. You know what it was? What is it? There were a lot of hot, cool dudes there already. And Wendy called me on this. And uh, this is why. You got jealous. Well, it was because. (laughs) Listen, they are all mountain men. And honestly, honestly, 100% hand to God, 16 of these guys, all the groomsmen, the grooms, literally took off their shirt five minutes into the reception. Oh my God! There Wait, was, like clean off? Clean off. There were fifteen to twenty jacked Just, shir- shirtless dudes, like Magic Mike XXL off. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can't hang with that, bro. And that we just can't do, that no, turned me off pretty quick. And I was like, I don't yeah. know where I am. I don't. You can't feel hang with that. That's real. Yeah, that's real stuff. We yeah. can only be like idiot comedian good. Mm-hmm. I can't be jacked mountain man good. Yeah, that's like real actual good. Yeah. That's so, like good shit. So then so then I just went the other way, didn't even take off my jacket or like loosen my tie. Oh, no. I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to be buttoned up guy. Really yeah. going to fight this, which is what I did, but it was fine. You showed him. Way to show him, Danny. <laughs> you got him, kid. You got him. Danny won. Danny won. I Dan won. Away. They go shirtless. I go buttoned up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but was how was good. the food? What did you eat? What did you eat? Food was they have food was you fine. Eat? It was kind of family style. Uh, okay, it was a meat and a fish. And was it an outdoor like outdoorsy venue? It was outdoors. It was beautiful uh, British Columbia mountain setting on this golf course. R- raining, Gorgeous. raining before and after the ceremony. Clouds part for the ceremony. Oh my god! Love that. that. That's a good omen. Love that. It was fun. It was fun. We got a lot to get to here. Do you have anything before I, w- I get into this NUP news? I know you're. Ch- I want to go to. Let's get into it. We got a big NUP news, but I'm. I, I, I'm really itching for a fucking. I haven't been to a wedding since my wedding, and I'm ready. Well, I mean, let's just put it out there. Uh, Eric is ready to attend your wedding, Wethead. So if you have one upcoming in the 2018 season, I want to jam. I, think I want to jam a cano at your fucking wedding. You want to jam a what? Jam a cano. It's a minute man. It's Sam P. California punk rock reference. You wouldn't get it. Ouch. <laughs> well, I don't know why I took it there. I don't know why I took it there at the end. That's why people don't like me. No. Well, let's take it to NUP News. Let's take it to NUP News. Oh my, well, it's 9 o'clock. Holy shit. It, it's time for NUP News at 9. NUP News at 9. <laughs> NUP News at 9. 
And now, Nub News 9. It's the Nuptial News on the Nines. Uh, and of course, always try to listen to Nup News at 9, at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. or on the Nines. So pause the podcast. If it works for you. If it, if you see you're, it's coming, you're getting up there, you're like, oh, I kind of want to listen to podcasts. It's, you know, yeah. it's close to 9. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on for 20 minutes. Wait until 9 if you want to listen to Nup News at 9 and have the full experience. Yeah. Yep. Or, get, um, or just pause it right now and go take a potty break, and we'll circle back around yeah. nine. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. Well, mm. Eric, tell them all about it. I this I feel like this is your this is your lead here. I don't want to get too into it because I feel like I don't want to be too over the top. Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin got engaged over the weekend. It was a lot of news. It's wow. a lot of news coming filtering through the twitter verse okay um i don't know what to do with it you know people talking about it Haley baldwin is stephen baldwin's daughter okay. uh i don't know how long they've i don't i'm i'm i was i'm pretty new to the situation honestly i i have been following justin bieber's career okay but you're, closely. you're not on the ground you you can't say for sure what is happening there. i don't have people on the ground i don't, I don't have people in the room i'm not in the room myself okay. i don't know what's going on what do all you I know, know? What do you know about this? All situation? I know now is that the relationship started from a fan point. Like Haley Baldwin was was Bieber's fan, uh-huh. and then they got closer, and okay. then they started dating, and then they got engaged, and yeah. then cut to them being engaged now, and and him announcing the engagement on Instagram uh-huh. without tagging her in it. Oh, is she on Instagram? She is on Instagram. Oh. And then she doesn't and, and he doesn't follow her. Oh. Okay. So And so that with like the whole like fan I don't want to judge the relationship. I'm not trying to judge the relationship. Yeah. I'm just saying that like usually like the fan, the power dynamic of the fan rock symbol, rock and roller mm-hmm. symbol icon. Right. It's weird. Yeah. Well he's got a lot of swagger. I know that. So he's got a lot of swagger. Um uh, and as far as and as far as talk about Groomzilla, Bieber's gonna be up there, buddy. You know he's gonna be up there. <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't, ta- if you don't tag your partner in your engagement, seriously, Insta, this is, he's making this all about him. What? Right. What? Right. Whistling, whistling, Dixie kid. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, cat? We'll add we'll add some whistles in in, in post, so it sounds like you're whistling your your asses. Okay, so I mean, the situation is fluid. Obviously, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm withholding judgment. I don't like the fact that he doesn't follow her on Instagram. I don't like the fact that she wasn't tagged in the engagement. Eric, that is, if I may say, that is very curious. It's very curious, and it's peculiar even too. <laughs> and I, I honestly believe that 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 Justin, you know, I think he's got a good. If he's written, if he's listening to the right people, that's mm-hmm. the thing with Justin. Yeah. Is if if Justin's listening to the right people, like uh, his manager Scooter, um, or his mom Scooter, you know, okay, I think he's gonna be good. If he's if he trusts in the people that got him here, I think yeah. he'll be good. If he's listening to like new people, outside people, cult leaders that maybe a cult leader of a cult that he's in. Why do you think Justin Bieber is in a cult? Because I think he's in a because he's in a cult. Okay. It's good enough for me. Yeah. It's a fluid situation. It's a fluid, well, fluid situation. It sounds situation. to me like you need to get some people on the ground, really suss out what is going on with the yeah. 24 year old Canadian pop star. And his, I want to suss it. And his, I want to suss it. Please suss. And his 21 year old bride to be. Uh, I'm just looking at here on, on, online. It, 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 what do you got? I guess he got Justin Bieber got Stephen Baldwin's permission before popping the question. So that's nice. Yeah. That That's going to be fun. That he went to old Stephen Baldwin. Uh, Stephen Baldwin's a total nut, right? Yeah. He's like really into, he, he's the, he's the, doesn't Alec and, don't Alec and Stephen always get into it because. Yeah, they don't talk to him, I don't think. Not that Alec's a perfect man, but um, I think, I think there's a God movie starring Stephen Baldwin that's really funny and you should check I've been that a out. huge Billy, I've, I've always been a Billy Baldwin guy oh, you're, from Jump. Okay. You're from team, Jump. You're team Billy. Yeah. Okay. I've been a Billy. I've been a Billy guy from Jump. Well, that's good to know. That's good yeah. to know. Uh, well, either way, congratulations to the both of them. 
Um, a lot of young youngsters in 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 the in the limelight getting engaged these days. How do you feel about yeah. that, Eric? I like it. I like it. I think you know, figure it out. Yeah, Have, throw yourself throw yourself a. I think that it's it's cool for Bieber to commit to some to someone. I think. Yeah, that w- that could be a nice, pleasant change for him. Yeah. Well, this again, is, no, again, no judgment. This is obviously an ongoing story, and we'll yeah. uh, keep you updated. As right. We this is just this is just the beginning. This is this just, is the, just beginning. the beginning. Um, there's going to be a lot more news coming out of this story and the Pete Davidson Ariana thing, which I sort of also a fluid to. situation. So Everything's fluid until it's not. Don't kid yourself. We're going to stay on top of the situation. Yeah, we're here for you. Wet heads, get wet, stay fluid. Thanks, Shannar. Thanks, Janar. Uh, Sound tech Janar is sitting in the, in the booth with us here at the Forever Dog Studios downtown LA, always doing a bang up job. He's become the fourth grooms. He really, He's become the fourth groomzilla. He really has. Um, Brett's mm-hmm. uh, uh, producer Brett is in and out of the studio these days. He's so busy, Eric. He's just so busy with planning his wedding, I assume. Getting his, his wedding. Getting I feel his... like we just completely stopped talking about Brett's wedding. We should circle back because last, as we left it, <laughs> his father in law was in jail. Yeah, <laughs> like we never really we got, we got so hot and heavy. I and I, I think our like true, I think our true crime poisoned brain. Yeah, because now everything's got to be a tense ten episode. True, and we yeah. were like, oh, okay, he's out of jail. Fuck it. We're, but but what well, we talked we just to, dropped we, just, we just dropped their wedding. We talked to. Did we ever find out if his dad, his father in law, got out of jail? Because we talked to his da- father in law in jail. We got to circle yeah, back with producer you, Brett. We got to we got to find out what's going on. <laughs> Is he still getting married? <laughs> All right, then then maybe we can bring in uh, Sound Tech Janar. See how he's a young man. He's he, Janar. You have a girlfriend? Sort of. Sort of. He says. Wow. So we're at all we're at all spectrums wow. of relationships here. We got we got the married. We're the old married. Been there, done that. Vets. Staying fluid. Staying fluid. Hashtag staying fluid. We got we got Brett in in the process of planning, and we got old I mean, J- old Janar sort of have a girlfriend. I feel like your first wedding anniversary is like, I would say around the corner. I think it's like now for the October. Yeah. Well, we it's July. It's July. You're right. Fall is around the corner. I feel like I'm comfortable saying it's around the corner. You're right. We're almost coming up on our one year anniversary, baby. We're here at Groomzilla's. Um, oh yeah. But Eric, there's more NUP news I want to get to before before we close up the bag on the Baldwins and the Beavers. Um, Dan it back. There is a back it up. There is a big. There's a bombshell scientific research out this week. A lot of a lot of people are carrying it. Um, science, huh? Yeah, science. Uh, I'm S- science. D- we'll add a whistle in post. I can't whistle enough <laughs> to save my life. Apparently, <laughs> I've been trying that. Did you could you tell how many times I tried to do it during yeah. our talk? Yeah. 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 I can't do it. Um, this is I'm going to go from Harper's Bazaar here. This is uh, but uh, c- picked up by a lot of news outlets here. Couples Harper's is fine. Yeah, couples who have expensive expensive weddings are more mm-hmm. likely to get divorced. Eric, mm-hmm. couples who have expensive weddings are more likely to get, to get divorced. Pricey engagement rings also lower the chances of long term happiness, according to a new study. Um, wow. <clears throat> couples who spend liberally on their weddings are more likely to get a divorce than those who stick to a tight budget. A new study has concluded the survey, which was undertaken by economics professor Andrew Francis Tan and Hugo M. Me alone, looked at the weddings and marriages of over 3,000 people in the United States. Eric, first, before I get into this more, does this surprise you one way or the other? Dan, not at all. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me at all because my, my longstanding thesis this theses fuck. fuck are you okay oh the whistle to, yeah hey, I'm trying to whistle all you say it and i'll whistle for you let's try that okay so i'm you, gonna say thesis i'm gonna say thesis so we'll whistle twice okay yeah my long-standing thesis where are you here Was we I go late? yeah my long-standing thesis okay uh <laughs> is that some people just get married to have a wedding yeah Totally. And then they're like, and then they're like, oh fuck! Now we have to have a marriage. And honey, you better get married for that marriage. Priorities, for son. Priorities, throw, kid. Throw, yeah, throw a party, kiddo. Throw a party if you want a fucking party. You know what? But a, if you want a, a wedding and a marriage, a marriage, a wedding and hmm. a marriage. No. Um. Yeah, I no. agree with you there. And that, and and I think that, like, I mean, 
of course, there are like so many couples who, you know, who have shit tons of money, who spend shit tons of money on their weddings and they have great marriages. Right. I'm saying that, you know, of course, again, everything is fluid. Everything is always fluid. Mm -hmm. Specifically in the sample, in the sample of men spending between $2,000 and $4,000 on an engagement ring is associated with 1.3 times greater hazard of divorce as compared to spending between $500 and $2,000. So the rings, the weddings, everything, if you're overspending, not a good sign. It's all overcompensating, and you have to look at – you have to be aware of what you're overcompensating for. Mm-hmm. And so many – oh, my God. Ugh. Listen to this, though, Eric. However, what, Dan? What, Dan? the study did find that spending uh-huh. money on a honeymoon is what? worthwhile as taking a post-wedding trip is – That's what – Quote, yeah. si- significantly associated with the lower hazard of divorce. Yeah. So – People like vacations. No shit. That's insane. <laughs> that is very, very, very interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that makes so much sense to me. That goes that goes along with my research as well, Dan. And we, the, my research being uh, the thoughts that I just made up in my head just now. It goes along with your what? Can you repeat that? The, my, my, my studies. <laughs> it goes along with your research. Re- research. Okay. Yeah, it's it, this is the kind of stuff that is like it's not curious at all. Yeah. You know, N- nothing people pe- love nothing peculiar nothing here. Curi- no. There's not a peculiar thing to be seen, boy. <laughs> and you go I wish, you know, I think that like the fact that we haven't had a honeymoon yet. I know. Yeah, we didn't really thing. take a honeymoon and um I think we should have done that. I think uh, we are staying. We I have. I'm doing. Uh, here's a plug. I don't do plugs, but I'm doing a plug. Okay. I'm doing uh, uh, next. If you're in the in the greater Washington D.C. area, I'm going to be doing the District of Comedy Festival. Hello. At the at the Kennedy Center on July 21st. I got two shows. I'm doing a regular stand up show, and then I'm doing Picture This, hosted by former Groomzilla Brandy Brandy Posey, Wonderful. who uh, officiated. My wedding, of course, mm-hmm. and it's at the Kennedy Center, and they're putting us up. Speaking of honeymoons, it was like because I keep every time we have stayed in a, a hotel since the wedding, I was uh-huh. like, "This is our honeymoon." Um, <laughs> Just but keep they're saying it, but they're putting us up at the Watergate. Look out! Yeah, and it's so fancy and so douchey, and this is for real going to be honeymoon. It's just one night, but they're putting yeah. us up, and the ho- the pool it has like a basement pool, and it's like. It looks like the pool from John Wick. Yeah. And it's crazy looking. It's the water gate. There's the scandal room. The scandal where, room. Where it all went down. You're going to so have I'm, honeymoon gate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not going to make a deep throat joke because uh, we're all better than that here at Grimzilla's. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it. Don't. Don't. Because we're better than it. Uh, I want to hunt ghosts. <laughs> Woodward and Bernstein themselves. Honeymoon number five. Uh, what were those dates again in, in D.C.? Plug it again. July 21st. I got two shows. One crazy night at the Kennedy Center. Honeymoon District, Gate. District of Comedy Festival. And then I'm going to be with my big, tall, strong wife slash husband at the Watergate that night. If you want to fucking come party Watergate style, find me at the Watergate, bro. <laughs> I'll be there, dude. I'll fucking be there, dude. Uh, they, no, got a, notorious they, got a, they got a whiskey bar. They got a rooftop bar. Yeah. They got this other bar. Great. We'll be slamming Red Bull Vodka's all fucking night. They'll find me. Don't miss it. That's the Nup News at nine. Let's close up the Nup News. Da, 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 da. Nup Oh, see, that's what we got to do. I'll do the, I'll do the, and then you do the, do, 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 on top. okay, okay. Nup News at nine. Nope, nope news. You've been listening to the Nope News at Nine, brought to you by viewers like you. And the Forever Dog Studios. Thank you, Forever Dog. Okay. Hey, let's keep moving here because we got a lot to get to. I do's, I don'ts real quick. Play the goddamn music. Let's go with that music already. Okay. It was great. We all love the music. It's fine. I don't know who makes that music, but they should be knighted like Paul McCartney. So you're saying they're British? No. So you're assuming they're in the United Kingdom, the greater United Kingdom. Americans can be united, right? I don't think so. If Americans can't be united, what the fuck am I doing here? (laughs) Why did I immigrate here? Huh? (laughs) 
<laughs> what did I immigrant here if I can't be knighted in in England? You got to go across the pond if you want that. Uh, Never. I do as I don'ts this week. Scantily clad sunbather refuses to move out of the couple's wedding photos. Now we're going to throw this picture up on, on on the socials at Grimzilla's at Grimzilla's Pod. Follow, subscribe. Uh, but there's a, there's a picture of a woman. It's like your classic. These are like the pictures with the bridal party. Also, you just whistled your ass. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, at least one of us got there. This picture is very memeable. It is a very memeable picture. Good point. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's like a classic wedding picture, except for the fact that there's a woman in a bathing suit laying on a towel about 10 feet in front of the bridal party, the wedding Not party. Not trying to move and doesn't give a fuck. Refusing to move. About your wedding. Refusing. I don't give a fuck about your wedding. Asked I gotta to get. move, refused. Here's the thing. I was... What hit me with the do's and the don'ts, and I'm going to hit you with Well, some, in some, order some to stuff. shoehorn this into an I do, I don't for this week, I, I think we just say, <laughs> you're the wedding party in that situation. What's, what's your do yeah. and do? What's your go-to? Do you, don't, do you don't do anything, or do you do do? I mean, so. if you can move, like, if they're really not trying to move, I would, I'm not trying to have a confrontation. Yeah. But. If you're really trying not to move, like, then we'll fucking move. Fine. You know what? But, yeah. What, what, what are you going to They're in front of this gazebo type thing. They clearly want the picture to be there. Okay. You fucking yeah, fair, move. Fair, fair, Get the fair. fuck out of here. What are you doing? I, I do support a confrontation. Maybe one of your groomsmen, maybe maybe a utility guy who's like a here we go. you know, an usher who maybe didn't goon. make the cut. Yeah. A random goon. You know who a random is? goon. The person your a wife hates, neck. but you wanted to be in the in a, an usher and she's like, he shouldn't be in the in the Oh, you're fucking your fucking buddy Artie from college. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, you're lucky I'm letting Artie come to the wedding. You're lucky. Get that guy on it. Or maybe it's a girl, not to play, you know, maybe maybe yeah. you got a bulldog girl you can send over. Are you fucking kidding me, Kathy? <laughs> Samantha. No, it's not Kathy. Um, yeah. Wait, here's my thing. Okay. To add context to the sitch. Please. This specific sitch in specificity, uh -huh. I would say when I found out that this was in England, it, it completely changed things for me because the sun only shines there like eight days out of the year. Oh, and so so if you're trying to get your fucking rays in, okay, like those people need the sun, or they like yeah, trying to get their vitamin they never see D or that's why, D or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I you you got to soak it up when you can. Yeah. <laughs> Hell or yeah. come high water, I'm getting my deep skin tan today. Yeah. Like, imagine, like, you've just, like, you know, set, like, Game of Thrones, you just went through, like, fucking seven winters or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the sun shines, and you're, like, fucking... Yeah. Also, but you gotta know, right, that there's a wedding happening, Why? and you just, just... You can't move for five minutes. I mean, you can move for no. a minute. I, That's I, definitely not about anything besides mental illness at that sun, point. Like, if you're not getting... Up, I agree. Yeah. Because it's not the only place that the sun is shining on that particular yeah. day. You can go get sun somewhere else. Also, yeah. when you said it was that it took place in uh, England, I thought you were going to mention mm -hmm. how how much the English avoid confrontation. <laughs> so everyone is just oh, yeah. probably they they were so they were almost gave it up to fucking Hitler. Well, Winston wasn't he was going to defend that island. So, yeah. So I heard. Um, okay. Wait, what did he specifically? You heard something specifically? He said something was like it something we'll that defend, he said. We'll was it something that we'll defend our island? That's my Winston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to win any Oscars anytime soon for that. You're going to get it. I um, think you're going to consider it. Consider it, please. Academy. Uh, that's I do's, I don't. Let's keep moving. There's a lot to get to. Play the music. So good. Oh, yeah. So I like good. the music a lot. <laughs> I can't wait until we turn on the music, inevitably, because that might come one day. Um, Eric, I think we should take a break and then come back with our guest, Nick Weiger. What, how do you feel about oh, I'm that? I'm really pumped about this. Nick Weiger's great. All right, let's do it. Uh, Eric, you want to intro, Nick? Oh, my God. Nick Weiger, he's one of the hosts of Doughboys, uh, one of the hottest podcasts around. He's phenomenal on Twitter. He's written a bunch of stuff, formed at UCB, huge Laker fan. Married Most man. importantly, he's also married. Most importantly. Let's talk to Nick Weiger. He's a Laker fan, and now we wanted to <laughs> oh, talk okay. to him about LeBron right. for a long time. Hi, Eric. How are you? Good, Nick. I can't see you. Okay, hold but, on. Hi, there he is. Hi. 
What's up, dude? When did you guys move out to Baltimore? It's been two years now. Really? Yeah. Wow. You like it out there? I do. It was a really, it was a um, big shift, right. a big change. But once we, I think we're right now, we're like really settling into the settling in part and it's going great. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, It's different. Hey, where, how do we get more in the in the headphones? Yeah, barely hearing Eric here. Yeah. He needs it in the cans. Get him in the cans. We'll get him in the cans. It's a little better. We'll get him better in the cans. Can we get Nick in Thank the cans? Thank you for rearranging. Yeah, of course, of course, too. of course. Where do you live? Santa Monica. But oh, I was over. Uh, I think I knew that. I'm working over in. Um, I'm working in Hollywood right now, and then I had something else before this, so that it's actually stacked up perfect. perfect. Oh, good. So yeah, good. Cool, cool. And uh, cool, cool. you won't have any. Well, I guess there's no real traffic going going west. Yeah, I normally in. take the train, but I, it, it's so like it's. I, I'll be out of here kind of on the late side, and I'm just. I might just be tired and take a lift. I'll see how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I. I do the same thing. Yeah, metro down here. It seems like a good idea. Yeah. Have you and then have you been relying on the on the Santa Monica train? I like moved the Santa Monica train like popped off like right after we moved. Right. Well, the I like the the Expo line is great. Like yeah, it's I, it's, it's yeah. wonderful. I, and and uh, for getting down here, it's like ideal. Like anytime I have to go to downtown from Santa Monica, yeah, you know, nine times out of ten, I'll take that. Um, yeah. But especially with parking down here. But um, uh, and and you know it goes up and down the, the it it goes on the west side. Like you know some places you want to go, it just doesn't go yeah. everywhere. But it's it's a yeah. great. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, how how long are we talking downtown to Santa Monica? Forty five minutes, not bad. I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's great. Uh, all right. Well, if you, thank you for joining us. If you're just tuning in, this is Groomzillas. We're here with Nick Weiger. Hi, hi, um, hi, Nick. You, uh, I, I want to get this out of the way because you, uh, my wife works for Red Nose Day. Did you write for Red Nose Day a couple years ago? I did yeah. a while back. Was, was that 2015? Might have been 2016, whatever the first one was. I feel like yeah. 2015 sounds right for me. I think me. so. I think they just did their third one. So, right. Yeah. I did sense. a bad job. I was really, I was useless on that show. Oh, really? No way. <laughs> yeah, it was no like, way. Why, why do you say that? Well, I think it was, I, I think I just like this, se- I didn't match the sensibilities of the rest of the staff. It was like a little bit broader and also too i think the uh you know there were there was a, they were they were very nice but like the head writer was like an old leno guy and so mm-hmm. like it was very different than like my sensibility mm-hmm. i was like the youngest guy there and i just yeah. felt like it yeah. in. um and then also i yeah. get like when i get when they're not going with my stuff i i just i just get you know like i retreat Defensive. and i'm like yeah exactly yeah. i'm just yeah. like whatever you know fuck it yeah you guys don't want me to do uh, whatever yeah, i won't do it you yeah. know like it, and, and it just got yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i did too yeah i just yeah. get i just get quiet and bitter but um but i mean it was it, it was fun to work on and they uh, they set me up in a hotel in new york for a week which was there you hell yeah. yeah was that the year it was oh. at uh the rock um what is it called not rockefeller's running across the street um the boy big uh radio city Oh, I don't know if it was at Radio City. It was at a bit an iconic New York City venue, though. I don't remember what the name of it is. I think it was Radio City. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. Do uh, you love hotels as much as I, I feel like you're a hotel guy? <laughs> Boy, I really do. And I've done I the do Airbnb too, thing a few times because it's Fuck cheaper. That shit, man. It's Rather, not as fun. It's not as fun. Hotels are <laughs> hotels are great. I love to feel yeah. doted on. I really like a hotel with a good lobby bathroom. Like yeah. that for me is like sure. a big thing of like okay, I just, I maybe need a little, whoever I'm sharing the hotel room with it, you know, for the past 10 years, it's, it will have been my wife longer than that, 15 years. Uh-huh. Um, I'm just talking about the, the, the uh, but you, you know, like it, it's, but who, in that case, I'm like, okay, I can go to this lobby bathroom. That's your I can second have, bathroom. Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. great. That's interesting because I, I have often used the, ho- the lobby hotel bathroom as a bathroom to use when I'm not staying there as a guest. Right. But like I'm in, you know. Oh, yeah. That's a great Sneaking move, too. I'm in need of a number two. That's a real power move. Yeah. And that's also a real, like, I, that's a real, like, white privilege move. Like, you can just walk through a hotel yeah. lobby if you're if you're a, a white man and, and people right. are just like, oh, I assume he's supposed to be here. Definitely. Yeah. I didn't. I, I, do, that at, I do that at, like, fancy bars. I used to do it in at the arc light a lot in Hollywood. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 There's that first floor. You don't have to buy a ticket to go to that first bathroom. And I just hop in there. That's good thinking. That's and a quality then, bathroom. Yeah. Because I, they play the, mu- the musical score. Right. To movies. <laughs> and while you're bo- it's nice when you're movies. Yeah, exactly. It's nice to be Cinematic like Jurassic experience. Yeah. yeah Jurassic Park yeah. thing oh, going on. Is that Poltergeist? It is. <laughs> oh, no. It's a little girl. <laughs> 
Um, so how long have you been married? You mentioned you've been with your wife for 15 years. We've been, yeah. So we started dating when we were both kind of pretty much fresh out of college. I, I did say that and people in, infer that I graduated, but I did not. I dropped out. She graduated. Uh, we, we had a shared history, went to middle school and high school together. We went oh, to wow. separate colleges. Yeah. Yeah, went to separate colleges and then we reconnected, had never like dated or were really even friends. Oh. Um, but then after after college we started hanging out and then we started dating. And yeah, that was so yeah, that that was that that was about fifteen years ago. And then we got married in two thousand ten. Okay. On um, September two thousand ten. So we're coming up on year eight, if I'm doing the math correctly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. That's an inter- that's an interesting. So you weren't even like you were just acquaintances. You weren't even exactly. friends. Yeah, we knew of each other. We had set. We had like you know some overlap in our circle of friends. Uh huh. Um and. Uh, for whatever reason, me saying circle of friends made me think of that mini driver movie. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. From like 1991. Circle. No. Chris O'Donnell, I believe. Chris also. O'Donnell and Mini Driver. It was her breakout role in the US. And yeah. it was like it and it was before Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. It was just called yeah. Circle of Friends. Never saw it, but I yeah. just I pictured the poster the moment I said that. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it wasn't yeah. good. <laughs> that, it wasn't are, as good as you thought it was. Not good. Be. Okay. Not, those are two very thought, 90s stars. Right. Good. Yeah, O'Donnell. Yeah. Mini Go- Driver has a resurgence. She's on a sitcom now. I actually think O'Donnell's doing well too, right? He's like on NCIS. You're right. Yeah, yeah he's been on working. NCIS. And Mini Driver was so fucking good in that movie. Oh God, Beyond the Lights. Okay, I didn't see it. N- she's Nate great. Parker, like, yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. Um, wait, 2010 though. Let's just get away with the Lake. That's a Laker championship year. Yes, that would have been. Yeah. Though, so that yeah. was the uh, that was the third. Uh, that was the third Kobe or the 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 fifth Kobe championship. The the third the Kobe finals. Yeah. 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 That was uh. That was, yeah. That was quite a year for me. Um. So we. Yeah. Uh, so, so we, uh, uh, yeah, we, we got married and we eloped. We went to Vegas oh, cool. oh, shit. and we just sort of like did it. I mean, we'd been dating for so long at that point and we just sort of had some discussions of like, Hey, we should get, uh, we should get married. It was so super casual. I didn't propose like no one proposed. It was just sort of like, Hey, let's do this. And then we just sort of settled on it and we just went and, and, um, that's great. I and, love that. Yeah, it was. And, and it was very impulsive and it was just the two of us semi impulsive. So yeah. That's so romantic. Great. Like yeah. a couple of days impulsive or like a, like a, like a month, a couple of weeks, yeah. we just sort of r- r- roughly discussed it. And then just some week and we were like, Oh, we should do it. Great. What yeah. is your wife's name? Natalie. Natalie. Do, Boy, uh, imagine if I got that wrong. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> I just choke on that question in this podcast. Hey, buddy, you passed. Oh, you boy. Passed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. What Thanks is for coming, Nick. That's Groomzilla's. <laughs> what is your... It's like the low standards of yeah. dudes. Like, yeah. what are our whole pockets? Well, that's a lot a of great dudes. Story. Natalie. Well, yeah. Good to hear it. <laughs> a lot of dudes don't know their wives' names. <laughs> that's the thing we're learning we're week to, to week that. here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let me. Okay. So you, Nat, Natalie, and you guys elope. I want to back up. Did yeah. you know Natalie? Were you were you for just from your perspective? Yes. Solely, you can't speak for her, obviously. But did you think Natalie was she ever like circling in your head? Like, oh, she's like a cool girl. I kind of maybe have a crush on if I knew her better. One hundred percent. Like okay. I thought she was like cool from a distance. I yeah. always I always thought she was uh, this. And it's weird to just talk about how you perceive someone as a tw- as a twelve year old. But I always <laughs> thought she was like cute. Yeah. And you know certainly. Yeah. Uh, and so I you know and also we had. Uh, she was like kind of like mean, if that may like, yes. like but in kind of a way I'm just like, oh, she's kind of mean to people. But like not because she was yeah. like a cool like asshole, like, you know, in the in the most popular click sort of thing, but right. more just kinda she was kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? Like yeah. she just kind of gave people yeah. shit and yeah. they deserved it. Didn't and take she, any bullshit. Exactly. And I yeah. like I kind of like that was like, oh, she's of got course. a little edge to her. Um, but then also yeah. like we so we were both in orchestra. She played violin and she was like first chair violin. She's okay. like super good. She's like like the holy shit. Yeah, she's like the the best in this this like good good high school orchestra and like you know uh, first chair first violin concert master. I think you call it. Or that is so impressive. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. I was and I was uh, I was in the bassoon section. Oh, the bassoon. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Bad boy, the bad boy section. Yeah, exactly. Double yeah. reeds sitting in the back. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, double reeds were causing trouble. <laughs> okay. Um And uh, you're so all, you're so there's such a punk rock thread to all these stories. Like you did like red nose day and you're the fucking badass <laughs> and now you're now you're in the bassoon section yeah, look right. at this fucking wow. <laughs> do, you, do you i bet you love playing peter and the wolf with the bassoon. right right i never got the privilege to play peter and the wolf oh, that okay. was one of the, the the big ones that because like legendary as far as legendary bassoon parts go i think that's probably number one <laughs> yeah right i honestly don't know what's number two maybe something in the lieutenant kj suite i don't know <laughs> 
But there was a there was a mo- oh you know what I got to play uh, there's a an Aaron Copeland uh, there's oh a, yeah there's an Aaron Copeland sim- are you do you have an orchestral background I at all? was in percussion uh, okay in, in middle school Doesn't and count. part of high school excuse that me counts. I was first chair of percussion <laughs> section so I think it counts um, yeah Copeland is the, all the Americana stuff yeah right? I can't remember which Copeland one it was but it has a famous bassoon solo that yeah. I have to play did you start on clarinet and make the transfer to bassoon I did yeah. yes and that is a very that is a very common path a lot of people start on some single read yes it, it, you know I, I kind of think it's like kind of like a multi-classing in D&D where like like you know you start as like a fighter or a thief or a mage and okay. then you can kind of eventually add like a more advanced all right. like, kit to it I'll take your word for yeah. it on the D&D <laughs> stuff so it's like uh, so like a lot of people they start like flute you know clarinet sometimes saxophone and then yeah. eventually they add another you know more advanced uh implement to their arsenal right we had a guest Wait. on who started as an uh, oboe player or a bassoon player and i asked him the same question i forget who it was was it brandy um maybe or i thought she was french horn it was a she girl was french horn, it was a she girl was french horn, but i think she started she started off on something else and then went to french horn maybe, wow that's um, hardcore yeah i can't remember because french horn I mean, is a i mean that's a fi- one of the hardest instruments in the orchestra and then also oboe yeah. is very tricky yeah. so if you're yeah. starting in those high degree yeah. of difficulty yeah do you and speak? brandy posey played the french horn uh for the uh george w bush in a in a what? parade that our high school her high school what? was in a parade for george w bush <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's wow. awesome. And, and yeah. I played, I actually played alto sax in marching band Whoa. for Bill Clinton when he came to Long yeah. Beach Unified Holy School wait. District. That's a, you're playing sax yeah. for the sax band? Yeah, exactly. But I, I wasn't yeah. the, I wasn't the sax soloist. There okay. was like, I was like one in a, in like an 80 piece band, but I was one of the sax players. Yeah. Um, and that's, you go for it. I was like, that's literally like 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 doing a stand up set and Jay Leno walks in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's literally the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah, he was he was like zeroing in on the sax players. <laughs> I like the look of that kid. <laughs> He's like, I prefer tenor sax, but I'll take an alto sax every now and then. Um, but the uh, yeah, so we had this this uh, we played Hail to the Chief, which was like yeah. it, it was amazing to play Hail to the Chief for the president. Whatever, for a I'm sitting not president. Yeah. Exactly, I'm that's not the awesome. biggest Bill Clinton fan these days, but at the time it sure. was yeah. like, oh, it's Bill Clinton. He's the That's liberal awesome. democratic president and right, he came to right. our school district and um the reason he came which is such a time capsule was because long beach unified school district was the first uh public school system to have uniforms like sit like uh, district wide oh. and it was like they were like oh it helps with behavior it improves test right. scores it was the 90s and so yeah so he was kind of yeah. going there like yeah. that, those were the problems people were dealing with back then <laughs> Right, and he was, yeah. you know, he just gave this speech about how important school uniforms were. Oh, funny. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, like you can't, like nobody, will, you can't wear a Raiders T-shirt exactly, or a Kings yeah. T-shirt. Right. If you're yeah. wearing this. I mean, that was literally the thinking. That was the it. idea. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't wait. You can't wear those dangerous LA gear shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other, distracting. Yeah, British, British Knights. Knights, right? British yeah. Knights is a big Knights. scare around yeah. BK shoes. Yeah. yeah. So was your wife also playing for him? No, because that was a that was a band uh, outing. The the or- strings were not involved. Right, yeah, right. She was violin, right. of course. Did you guys combine ever and play orchestra? Yeah, we were definitely because so we were also. So I was in man. I did too much music in high school. I have a lot of music questions. Right. I think obviously. it's so right. cool. I think it's so cool. And I wish I. I mean, I I'm not a musician, but I think there's like I think high school marching bands are like my favorite. It's like my favorite music. Nothing I, gets me right like a fucking marching band. I really wished we were a cool marching band because we could have been. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in Long Beach and, and you know, it's like a, a, a lot of like area bands were like they were like high stepping, like cool. Like yeah. it was like it was like, oh, they, they yeah. have like a little bit of, you know, uh, there's yeah. some pizzazz there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we were we were just like a very traditional, just sort of stayed like sort of, you know, yeah. uh, a, 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 like, like a co- like model on a college marching band. Yeah. It was just like very kind of, yeah. You did the basic choreography with the roll, t- with the roll stepping. Exactly. But not too much. It, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was very mil it was very military, military band derived. And so yeah. it wasn't yeah. super exciting to watch, but, but yeah, the, the fight songs and stuff were fun band. to play. Yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. weren't Nick Cannon and drumline or anything. No, <laughs> man, who, I wish. I mean, who can? Who you know? is? I mean, that's only one person who <laughs> yeah. can do that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I played marching band. I play. I was an orchestra. I was in the symphonic winds, which was the the uh, esteemed you know wind ensemble. And then wow. I was in the and I also played jazz band my junior and senior years. Yeah. I was doing like four music things. Yeah, which was insane. And then as soon as I got out of high school, I dropped all of it. I'm oh, just no. like yeah. I'm walking away. I was gonna ask, do you still play the bassoon? No, I don't. I maybe should. Maybe that could be uh, my thing. 
<laughs> Maybe I could be the, the guy unique. who just yeah plays bassoon on the side. Uh, yeah. But no, I more just, uh, I, the way I realized it, I think I, I may have talked about this uh, uh, recently with someone else, but I, I sort of, I sort of reached a point where I, th- I saw that like, you know, the high school athlete who kind of has an, a, a realistic assessment of their own ability and is kind of like, yeah. you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be a professional. Right. And I kind of yeah. had the same sort of thing of like, I was very good, yeah. but I was all like work ethic and practice. I wasn't someone with like this natural talent yeah. that, that I could like take to another level. I was always going to be yeah. limited by right. the fact that I was just like a guy who l- learned all the sheet music. Yeah. 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 I, I feel the same way. That's sort of why I stopped drumming. I was in jazz band and right. I couldn't jazz drum because jazz drumming, as you know from Miles Teller's breakout hit, Whiplash, <laughs> takes a lot of effort and right. talent, um, which I just wasn't willing to work for. It's right. so competitive. Yeah. It's so competitive, too. <laughs> Um, does Natalie still play violin? No, she did. She dropped it too. And she had like offers. She could have gone to, she was like fantastic. And she could have gone uh, to places for a music scholarship. Oh, and really? she decided not to oh, do it. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah, I think she just wanted to pursue something else. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I, and I, I don't want to speak for her. I, I, I think she, I think there may be times when she's like, oh, maybe I should have done that. But also like, I don't, you know, whatever that's life. Right. Yeah. 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 So you guys both grew up in Long Beach. Yes. Okay. And I, I, I want to be spe- I want to be specific. I'm, I'm from Lakewood because people have called me out on that. I was like, you're not from Long Beach. I was like, well, I went oh. to middle school and high school in Long Beach. People yeah. know Long Beach. So I say Long Beach because they know what it is. And also it makes me seem cooler right. um, and also yeah. a liar. Uh, but the but I actually was, grew up in Lakewood. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you and you and Eric are both diehard Lakers fans. Um, so maybe yes. you should just get this LeBron talk out of the way and we can move on. Did to- you, Eric, did you see this, this blaze pizza nonsense today? Did he not show up? He didn't show up. So oh, no. as, as we're recording this, that this is, oh, the, no. this is, this is very much frozen in time, but today <laughs> this is the worst. it's, it's horrible. So it's the worst thing he could have done. It's so bad. Yesterday he like blaze pizza was like, we're going to give away free pizza. You guys may have seen this on Twitter um, today uh, or and then later that day, LeBron quote tweeted it and was like, was like, uh, haven't been to a pizza party in a while. Culver city, like made the big eyes emoji. And everyone was like, Oh my God, he's 100% going to be at the Culver city oh, wow. blaze pizza tomorrow where they're giving away free pizza. Yeah. Like two, 2,000 people showed up, <laughs> waited for like six hours, oh my God. and LeBron just never showed up. Whoa. That sucks. It's crazy. I still, I, I can't, I cannot possibly understand his logic behind and teasing that and not paying it off. And he's been radio silence about the whole thing on Yeah, Twitter? I don't, I mean, I just hope something horrible didn't happen. He's also that, the, just I think he's also it. like the primary owner of Blaze Pizza. The co- it, Like he's the CEO. He has, yeah, oh. he has, well, I don't know if he's the CEO. <laughs> he's not like, no. Like oh, a, no, he's the CEO. He's not like a boardroom I mean. every day. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it'd be amazing. He, if anyone be, could do it, if any, so awesome. exactly. If yeah. any pro athlete could pull it off, it's LeBron. Uh, but the, I think he's a, he's like a an investor basically. Okay. Okay. He's put a lot of money into oh, it. Oh, even weirder that he doesn't show up to that event. Yeah, yeah. you would think so, right? You would think like, That's oh, why this I is- was like, for sure he's gonna show. Up. Maybe he went to the one in Pasadena that I used to go always go to, and then like he just like hung out with eight people. <laughs> or just happened to be in the Pasadena. <laughs> just like, was, like turned around. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a great move. Like he didn't con- like I didn't confirm Culver City. Yeah, I put it's Culver true. City question mark. It's true. But there is like now because also this is right on the heels of his mural being defaced by a Kobe fan. Right. Oh, and do you think that was it? Yes, the defacing of the mural. Yeah. You think that? Do you oh, think yes. that made him be like, I'm not going to Blaze. Oh no 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 no. Oh okay. no, no no. I don't think so at all. I think he just. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know why. Like, is it over? Do people, everyone go home? I, I think like, so. Yeah, just, I think I think okay. they gave people free pizza, but they didn't get to actually meet him. That's pretty. That What a what a mess. <sighs> right. It's a debacle. <sighs> yeah. Imagine if yeah. you're working that shift at Blaze. <laughs> well, because they probably, too, they probably didn't have any insider info. They probably were just like, oh, yeah. he's going to show up. And yeah. then. They had to like yeah. promise people it would, you know, like, uh, like, yeah, at Krusty the Clown summer camp is the reference I think of. They keep promising <laughs> yeah. that Krusty's going to show up. Right, right. So Ugh. wait, so where was the mural defaced in Cleveland or in L.A.? In L.A. It was in L.A. Okay, yeah, and it's like it's a really cool mural. It's it like a really it's of LeBron, and then someone like like uh, King of L.A. Yeah, and someone like like spray painted over it in yellow paint, and then put like no his King. finals record three and six. Yeah, no King. Which, yeah. is, which is like what it's like what a, uh, it's like what a vandal would write on a statue of Superman and like a Zack Snyder movie. <laughs> That's what it's like a fucking Kobe. Yeah, 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 Kobe yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is it really is. Wow. So much drama going oh, on. Yeah, it's the worst because like these Kobe fans are coming out of the woodwork. Right. To like they're so jealous. Huh. And, and because I feel like they're feeding off of like 
Kobe said some shit earlier, like before free agency started. Or right, how, like, official. Because he's he... not a winner. He's not a champion. He's in the narrative. It's not about oh, narrative. Oh, wow. All this shit. But then and he then, welcomed like, when it happened, right? He welcomed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he's like a company man, and right. so like yeah. when it got real, he was like, "Oh, he's one of us," right. and all this shit. But Interesting. Like, but Kobe fans are fucking insane. I, Eric, I, I'm 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 curious on your POV because I am as, and I know you're a huge Laker fan, yeah. and I know that you are you are probably of the Laker fans that I know. You are mm. probably the most outspoken Kobe skeptic. I am, I am like I am oh. like a realist of where Kobe is in the in the order of NBA greats. Right. Um, but certainly his personal, you know, shit is right. like so like such a like a, a smudge right. that I'm just like, oh God, yeah. it's such a I asterisk. Exactly. Right. Under, yeah. Under, under, under and that's about, but what is where where did you re, like at what point did you kind of uh, pivot to that or have you always kind of felt that way about Kobe? So okay. So like I like to I I actually like like to keep the personal I, I like to keep the rape allegation the, the rape case like separate from the the basketball thing cuz right. it's like I do like I obviously think that he was guilty and admitted so right. in in the, in the civil thing in the in the transcript of the civil case that was leaked I believe that whole thing um I also believe that like I read the transcript with like the interview with the cops and the fact that he brought Shaq up during the first inter- in- interrogation where like I should have just done what Shaq did and just paid him off. I was like, Oh man, that's like the fact that he brought Shaq up, in- right. Sha- brought Shaq into it. I was like, Oh, that's just how Kobe's brain works. Like he's so competitive and was in such a place. He threw Shaq to, like, under the bus. Right. Out- he was like trying to get Shaq out of LA at that point. Right. Wow. Um, and then on, on, on the basketball court, it was, I don't know if you're going to remember this, like it's a deep cut. It's from like 2003, an Easter Sunday game against the Kings when that rivalry was like really, really big. Right. Yeah. And everybody, it was a really bad year when they had like Peyton and Malone. Um, so it's 2004 probably. But he like, he like wouldn't, everyone was like Kobe shooting too much. And it was like a really high stakes game. Like they were chasing the Kings in the standings. And he did that thing where he would like, he like didn't shoot the first half to right. prove a point. Right. And the Lakers like were down by 20 and he was just trying to prove a fucking point. And then I also think that he, I don't know, like I don't have any proof, but I feel like he would torpedo games down the stretch just so he could win them at the end. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, I, th- I think there's, I mean, probably even, it, even subconsciously he might've been, dogging it a little bit at times just yeah. so he could kind of be the hero in the end. Yeah, I mean those 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 last couple Shaq Kobe seasons were maddening. And it was the know, worst. and and even 2000, I mean like, you know, obviously you, you, your your team that you root for, you wanted to win every finals at some level, yeah. but also in 2004 it was kind of like it was a better story that Detroit won cuz that Lakers yeah. team, they were it, it was kind of like yeah. when when someone I, I don't I don't really follow MMA, but I know there's a phenomenon of there's like a more skilled fighter yeah, loses to yeah. someone who just muscles yeah. over them. Yeah. It kind of felt it's like going Boston too. The exactly, first Boston yeah. series. Yeah. Right. It was just, it was just like they were and, and, and Detroit was just better. And yeah. the Lakers were, they maybe, was that the year they they like it was, they got by the Kings and the Kings there was like a bad call that was two thousand two and they oh, okay. they won yeah. the title that year and that that was a whole other thing but two thousand four yeah. yeah. it was like clearly they were a deeply flawed team that just had like some very very talented players yeah. but um and and, he, and yeah go for it and he played and he played like he was the only one that two thousand four year that like played I think he played like almost every game right and played very very hard but they just like that like Tayshawn Prince just shut him down also. The when he like called out Kwame Brown and Smush Parker like after you tired for no reason at all just to like shit on them. It's was a, like yeah. it's I it, couldn't. It's kind I of like the it. I mean because a lot of that I think is owed to MJ right because MJ kind of yeah. instilled this 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 yeah. uh, machismo culture and yeah, Kobe was kind of like trying That's to go for that is. like okay we're tr- you try to you you emasculate your opponents yeah um you call people weak you have to like you know you challenge everyone make them stand up to you it's a very alpha male sort of I'm gonna dominate everyone mentality yeah. but it's also like that's that's very does not square at all with how sports are in in no. the 20s. especially basketball exactly especially yeah. basketball right now yeah you have people like being open about you know they're having like a, a you know a, a, a mental health issues and like I can't imagine yeah. what that would have been like in like the 90s or the 2000s like people the guys right. would have just been humiliated for that you right. know what the one thing what the, the thing what like my favorite Laker for a while was Lamar Odom right um, and he still is one of my favorites of all time I just love Great. like James 
the number two guy's always been my favorite historically. James Worthy's my favorite yes. guy. Lamar, um, and now fucking Kuzma. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, really, it sounds like you're almost like attracted to like number threes, right? Because it's it's kind of yeah. like it's like yeah, I mean, Worthy. Yeah. I, was too, I like I miss Kareem. I was like too young for Kareem, yeah. but it was. Like, but magic, it, yeah, yeah, magic, yeah, magic worthy. I mean, like he, yeah. he always, he, you know, definitely a Hall of Famer, and and maybe Odom will will sometimes be someday be reflected as a Hall of Famer. I don't know. He might just miss it. But um, I think, yeah, I think guys, I think that people that know the game know how good Lamar. Right, was. he was so good, and and you know, just like those those utility knife players, and then also that yes. just have so much. Those are my guys. Exactly, those are my exactly. Guys. Yeah, one hundred percent. I guess I wonder if like I because Kuzma is also such a specialist. You know, the way he's yeah. like he's such a great shooter. I wonder if like mm-hmm. Josh Hart might kind of more end up mm. slotting into the, that role now i'm in love with i'm in love with josh hart he's so, so hard. good he's playing so well in he's, summer league he's so incredible yeah but and then the, the other, well the thing was like when they got pow and like first couple of games when everyone's like holy shit kobe and pow just like synced up beautifully right. and we're destroying people there was a tnt game running back after they beat phoenix and they're running back to the locker room and kobe was talking shit to the camera and he was like i have weapons now i have weapons with right. me I don't just have butter knives. And I literally just like looked over to Lamar and I'm like, this motherfucker has been going to battle for you for these like last couple of years on shitty fucking teams. Right. And you're going to throw him under the bus like that. He's standing right there. Oh, I love Lamar Odom so much. That made me so mad. Right. And that, since I think that was the last straw. And I was like, man, fuck Kobe. And then, and then also, yeah, he like branded literally branded himself a predator, black Mamba right. after like after like not going to jail for rape, I did, I never thought of that sp- the specificity of that. But you're right; yeah. that is it is. Kind and he of changed his number weird. too, and then the, and they cha- and he changed number right after that because of that, because of marketing, because of branding, and then the fact that he got to have two numbers retired, I thought was a slap in the face to like everything that happened in Colorado, and it sucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, w- um, how do we feel about his Oscar winning short? <laughs> Wait, how do you feel? About it? Uh, I have actually seen it. I saw it at the. I saw John Williams at the Hollywood Bowl, and yeah. Toby was a surprise guest, and he oh, came out. Wow! And he introduced it because John Williams did the music for right. it. Right. Um, I, I mean, it was fine. It, it was it felt like a long commercial to me. Have you seen it? I have seen it. I think it's good. It's like well animated. Yeah. It, it is. You know, yeah. again, it's just it's just weird because it's, his it's goodbye him. poem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and also too, it is just sort of in the context of our current age, it to me, it's crazy that they were just like, oh yeah, he'll be nominated for Oscar and then he'll yeah. win the Oscar. The yeah. Me Too Oscars. There, yeah, there was, exactly. And there was not even any, I don't know, I, it, it, it's weird. I'm conflicted about it. Because then, then also I was like, I saw him win and I was kind of like, I, w- I was kind of excited. So like I tweeted a, yeah. a Kobe gif and I was like, hey, that's cool. Like, yeah. And then after yeah. like, like um, 10 minutes later, I was like, why did I do that? That's such a yeah. weird thing to, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's so conflicting because you, you tie yourself to pro athletes and you tie yourselves to their legacy because they have brought you moments of great joy and, and great suffering and, and your emotions are wrapped up in that. And then so when they have some sort of personal failing, something that's that's irredeemable, it's yeah. like it's hard to square that with your fandom. Well, yeah, it's yeah. the whole thing. Especially, especially when they don't like make an effort. I don't want to say that he owned up to it, but like he didn't like really – the fact that he just like shut the door and like doesn't acknowledge like I watched the like his movie for Showtime the Muse like I watched that thing like right he doesn't talk about it he refused I know it's like a gag order thing but it's like I don't know that just screams more guilt and I loved and I like the most um, authentic moment I've ever had with a stranger ever probably was when I was like working at my at my restaurant job I got off and the like it was a bunch of Laker fans that were that. Uh, that were regulars there and they would just like stick around and just like watch the game with them. And it was a game winner. He, he hit it against Miami. Mm-hmm. Like he hit that bank shot from the top, like, right over D Wade. And I just had the most natural, like just reaction high 10 with this dude. <laughs> that was like, Oh man, only like, <clears throat> only like a phenomenal athlete. Right. That I love could have done that. Like right. made that happen for an entire city. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm conflicted too. Is what I'm trying. The uh, when when point four happened, uh, the yeah. famous the the famous Derek Fisher shot. Yeah, I was watching with my roommates, and I ha- I had this one roommate, and he was like five four, but like two hundred pounds, like solid rock. Just like he just all yeah. he did was work out. He just was so fucking jacked. Uh-huh. And and then my other roommate, uh, Gian, who was about his height, a little taller than him, but about his height, but also just like this sort of like yeah, uh, thinner you know gamer physique. And so we're watching this game 
and uh, a, a Fisher hits the shot, and it, it, like you know, uh, we just go nuts because we're we're all Lakers fans, and little Big John. Uh, grabs Gion, this 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 uh, the skinnier guy, and throws him across, like literally, like throws him across the room, like a broken, like, he's like, ah! and, like slams him into a wall. He like fucks up his shoulder. He's like, ah, oh, man. but it was just like so. It was just like pure elation that we didn't yeah. know what to do yeah. with this energy. Little Big John <clears throat> tossed Gion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. That's Great. awesome. I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think when when Ori hit his shot, when Rob, that famous shot. Oh yeah. I think. I think that's by far the highest I've ever jumped in my life. Right. I was at work again. I was working my restaurant job and just watching the game and he hit that shot and it was just so unexpected that I jumped so fucking high. Yeah. And I've never been able to ever <laughs> jump like that high anywhere, anywhere near close that high ever. Right. What I'm trying to. Um, uh, I do have to segue away from this inside basketball talk. Of course. We can't talk about the Lakers. We can't forever. talk about the it. Lakers. Is your wife a Lakers fan? Uh, she go. She'll go to games with me, yeah. and she'll watch games, yeah. and she gets very excited. She's definitely like, it's like, it's great because she's. I never felt like she's forcing it, or mm-hmm. I never felt like she's yeah. like, oh, this is something my husband likes, so right. I should like yeah. it. I always felt like she was just like watching something. If she's in, if she's into it, she'll watch it. If not, she'll like do yeah. something else. But when she does watch it, she's super engaged, and she's also like. She picks up on things, which is great. Like yeah. she, she, uh, she you know, remembers players' yeah. names. She remembers their tendencies. Yeah, she remembers yeah. like you know, uh, 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 offensive sets and stuff. Like she picks up on things. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. So going back to the wedding in yes, Vegas, um, you you said you planned it about a month out. What, what did you do? The Little White Wedding Chapel there, or what is the what? Do you, how do you elope in Vegas? Our place was called Little Chapel of the West. The thing that we found instructive is that the. Uh, or instructive is maybe the wrong word, but but it, it, the the thing that that was kind of different from our perceptions of Vegas is you can't just like walk in someplace and be like we're getting married and they're like the, all right yeah. here we go like you have to like go to the courthouse right and get yeah. like a you have to still get a, like a you know fill out a form and yeah. you, there's there's like a whole layer of bureaucracy you have to go through before you can go to one of those chapels it's not like the 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 Ross and Rachel you could just walk into the chapel and they'll marry you five right. minutes later right they in the and in, there's probably like a lot of people doing it too there's and a lot of people like doing that so we, yeah exactly so we had to go and like we wait for like uh you know we wait in line for like two hours there's people like wearing wedding dresses and tuxes in line uh-huh. um and uh we're you know we're just not wearing our normal clothes uh and there's all these like the one thing I liked that, that actually the one of the things that I that I will remember is kind of like it. Oh, it made it feel like a thing is that there's all these people outside the courthouse who are trying to sell you like, hey, you want a limo ride to the venue? Hey, you want a uh, yeah, uh, you know, you, you need a priest. Hey, you know, you need officiant. They're yeah. all trying to like sell you something. Yeah. Um, yeah. All the add ons. All the add ons. Yeah. But like like if you like pass on it they're still just like so congratulatory because they just like are there's still like an appreciation oh. for the sacrament <laughs> which is great yeah. so, so yeah. it's like no man we're, we're good we got a rental car like all right man hey god god bless you like congratulations like oh. and, and like yeah. everyone was doing it i was like oh that's great that yeah. it's just sort of there's this positive it's still, energy it's still so real yeah. exactly it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah interesting right yeah. Oh, i love that you can't like it's almost like even if that's your job to sort of like uh stand outside the courthouse and try to like you yeah. know hawk people into buying something that they don't need you still aren't gonna you, it still doesn't make you cynical about marriage yeah that's vegas kind of has that doesn't it vegas right. is kind of like this place where it's like we're kind of all in on this to get like in this together which is like such a casino vibe but it is like that's yeah. so sweet i yeah. love that yeah. i never even thought about that with like a vegas wedding but yeah right it, that's what it is so so you can't do the the thing you see in movies and tv all the time you get get drunk and go to a wedding and wake up married to somebody no you still i mean i think the courthouse is open 24 hours so you oh, can okay. still you can still do it but it's just like there's a it's there's a much hoops. longer process yeah. you're going to be spending yeah. three to six hours not you're not going to get it done in 15 minutes uh but we went and did that and then we had we went to this play the venue i think was called little chapel of the west um which is at the very end of the strip it's like this this famous building that Eric has a cat that's uh, walking yeah, in front I'm of the sorry. microphone. It's so distracting. I'm no, sorry. it's great. It's delightful. I just, I, I'm, my big... I'm telling this anecdote, and the, the tiger tail is just whapping you in the face. <laughs> it's Darius. He's named after Darius Morris, uh, a guy that did not make the Lakers because we got him around training camp, and I was like, he's not going to stick. We're like, we're going to get rid of him, and I named him Darius Morris, and then Darius Morris made the team, and so did Darius. But he's being a dick. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Um, and uh, so, and then we went over there, and and yeah, it's this famous building that a bunch of you know uh, people have been ma- have been married in. They've actually moved the building, like physically moved the entire building, like oh. four times because you know yeah. historical a new, society exactly. And a new yeah. casino gets built, so they just move it further down the strip. Cool. Uh, and uh, it's right by the Vegas sign. 
and we got married by this guy with this this officiant who's just this dude in a, a priest collar and as a classic radio voice and he like oh, went cool. into the, he went into the radio diction we <laughs> are jo- <laughs> yeah we are joined together in, to join Natalie Fom Schottler and <laughs> Nicholas Weiger and holy and it was, it was great and he was like he got so much gusto behind it yeah. and it was just it was literally the three of us and a photographer and then we just we rushed through the ceremony uh, I remember you know or did it the normal pace but it was just so fast because yeah. we were just doing this the yeah. standard um, thing he had the and, script exactly yeah and then I remember the thing I remember is just like we were like we were so we were so like ah fuck it we've been so casual about our relationship to, to the point where we're just getting married in Vegas but then when it was actually happening we were like like our hands were like trembling, like mm-hmm. as we were doing yeah. it, we were like physically like shaking so much because yeah. it was just like the gravity of the thing was real. actually hitting us. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you and I, I don't know about you, but going in, I didn't expect. I was I was hoping I would feel something, but I, I was assuming I would not like feel what you're supposed to feel. Right. Um. But yeah, it it inevitably gets real. So many dudes have said that too on the podcast. Right. Yeah. So many people were like, I'm so glad I'm not a fucking sociopath. Yeah, exactly. Really exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So was there ever any, in the, in the month or so that you were planning this, was there ever a thought that you invite close family or friends, or did you always want to make it about the two of you? It, it was, uh, I think it was the kind of thing where she has a very large family, and I think it would have been, if we invite a few people, we invite everybody sort of thing. Yeah. And, 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 not, and I don't want to put it all on her side, but I mean, like, then yeah. it, that it also becomes, then if that becomes a thing, then I'm inviting my family, then we're inviting, well, why not? We're just going to do family. We have friends that we're closer with than yes. all of these random, you know, yeah. some of these random distant relatives. Yeah. Uh, so we were just like, you know, we'll just do the most streamlined version possible. And then we didn't tell our parents. We didn't tell either of our parents, but she did tell her, um, her brother and, uh, our, and her, his, uh, his wife, um, and, um, we, uh, so we, they, they were the only per- people in our immediate circle that knew. Uh, and then we just were sort of like, we'll do it and we'll, we'll surprise everyone. And when we told everyone, I just, I literally sent an email saying what happened to some family members <laughs> like the next day. And wow. everyone was so happy. Everyone was Including just like, your parents? my parents yeah. were like over the moon. They yeah. were so yeah. happy. And everyone, all oh, my, a- all my aunts and uncles yeah. and cousins, everyone, everyone was so, so happy. That's and so, great. so that's it fucking great. support. I loved that's it. Yeah. yeah, it was great. And yeah. her family as well. How did her parents take it? I, I don't think, I think there might've been like a, her parents were like, were so, so happy. So oh, like, so excited. Uh, her mom like is is you know her and she's english is her second language but i just like she i remember when she saw me at the first time afterwards she just she just like held my hand just said like mom she was just like she was oh, just like making cool. me oh, see oh, what that's okay. <laughs> oh, but like uh, that's but, my yeah yeah uh, but um, new family, new, new family exactly, exactly. So that yeah. and then and then everyone was uh, so like her parents were great. Her her brother uh, was great about it. Uh, my brother's super chill, and and his wife are su- is super chill. They they were like totally cool with it. Yeah, no, I, I, there I, there might have been one or two uh, naysayers on the on the fringes of the family tree, but I mean oh. there, there was ba- basically everyone was okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> there's always going to be those there's always going to be those fringe branches right yeah. <laughs> wait till wait till bieber finds that and he's marrying into the baldwin family he's so fucked oh boy <laughs> what a mess. So the fucked. baldwin family is fringe it's all fringe. <laughs> wait nick i want to ask you what'd you guys what'd you guys eat after uh, mm. So we went to RM Seafood. We were we we're huge Top Chef fans, and there's this okay. uh, the one of the chefs, Rick Moonen, had a at a seafood yeah, yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he has one in Vegas, and so we were like, all right, we'll get married, then we'll go to the seafood restaurant. And we just went right afterwards. We didn't tell like the sta- the server or anything that we just gotten married. We we're just like, we'll just eat normally, like we would, and it was great. Oh, cool. And then um, and we also this is the uh, this is the weird thing of of like as we were leaving because you know we were in this this giant Vegas parking garage, uh, we're pulling out and we see another famous chef Hubert Keller is just walking through the garage. He's a, he's this guy. He's got this uh. He's, 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 he's another top chef guy. He's got a bunch of Vegas restaurants. He's got this, uh, uh, I think Burger Bar is one of his big ones. This oh, yeah, in, in I ate there. Yeah, I yeah, ate yeah. there. Yeah. Funny. Um, but um, it, it was like, yeah. yeah, it was for, for a couple of people who like, uh, a big part of our relationship is food. A big part of oh, our marriage yeah. is food. We love to go eat at nice restaurants. We love to, you know, yeah. we yeah. like we like cocktails. And so that mm. was like, that actually worked, felt like it was like, oh, this is cool that we got good to eat omen, this good yeah. Exactly, exactly. A couple of big chefs yeah. walking around. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so do you, and then you just stay in Vegas and get a hotel room? And We went home that same day. We just, <laughs> we got married. We, went, we had this meal and we're like, you know what? Let's just go home. We had this, the hotel, we had the, a, 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 uh, a hotel room for another night at what's that place that used to be called? What the hell is that one that used to have the volcano in front of it? 
Uh, the Mirage, oh, the Pirate, the, the Mirage, pirate one? the Mirage. Mirage. Yeah, we're saying yeah. it. The Mirage. Oh no, yeah, Ti Treasure, Treasure Island. Island. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah. Treasure Island. Yeah, but, yeah, and they just they renamed they renamed it Ti as like to, to cool. make it sort of like this. Yeah, this cool place for adults. <laughs> it used to be this kid friendly Disney one, yeah. and so we were there, and it was just like it was so douchey. Like we just uh, felt yeah. like everyone was just so douchey there. We were just like let's yeah. just get the fuck out of here. Like wait, let's just go home and we'll we'll sleep in our bed. Um, and so we just drove we just drove home and got like some cheesecake from the supermarket to be as our mm. be our wedding cake oh and then God. I went to bed. I love that. Yeah. It's so romantic. I would do the same thing. Right. I love I love I love going home. I I know. I love I love throwing <laughs> Especially in if the it's towel like douchey like exactly. douchey Vegas. Douchey Vegas is like yeah. you can't I can't deal with yeah, that. Yeah, it was too much. It's like and my yeah. my wife is like she loves swimming and she was so excited to go swimming because the the thing at a pool did not know like the whole Vegas pool thing oh, and so yeah. she's down there and there's like all these shirtless bros oh. like holding like you know yeah. like fucking uh, oh. tequila shots um and yeah. just just pissing in their fucking trunks <laughs> and she's oh. literally she's literally down there just like swimming laps past all yeah. these like douchebags oh, <laughs> but she's yeah. just like hey, I wanted to do it so. Yeah. Uh, That's adorable. And the other thing is then we got a we so we we left a night early. Um we we went down there to we checked out. We're like, we're just gonna check out early. We 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 got another night already paid for, but whatever. Fuck yeah. it. We don't care, it's our wedding. Um and um uh, a week later, I got like a thirty-eight hundred dollar charge on my Discover card, Whoa. and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And so I called them, and it was this whole like like it turned into this multi-week rigmarole where they were like, "Yeah, uh, so the duvet covers were missing from your hotel, so oh, no. we we charged your card for it." And I was like, what? "The duvet cover," and all we could figure is that someone who worked there like saw that someone had checked out early and so and they, they the sneaked room. in and they, they they either used the room or they stole something from the room and, and they then, go for the duvet cover i don't know maybe it's got a high resale value it's like the, the catalytic converter in a car you can yeah. you can sell for a That's high you know yeah, yeah exactly that happens a lot yeah. maybe that was it but it was like a, this this huge pain in the ass but that was the only negative part of the whole experience oh, but you didn't yeah. have to yeah. pay it eventually no it, it got it got you it, just had to get on the phone a bunch for exactly i had to get the discover uh fraud guys on it on it <laughs> okay yeah uh, that's a splendid use of the word rigmarole. Also, by the way. <laughs> yeah, snuck it, snuck it right in there. That's a nightmare. Agreed. But that's great. I mean, oh god, that's so romantic and no frills at the same time. That's really right. hard to pull off. Yeah, it's really hard to pull off, and it's beautiful. Oh, God bless you. It worked out. It worked out well for our personalities. We're both kind of laid back, sort yeah. of um, reserved people, and so it was just like. It, it it worked for us uh, right. but then also yeah. like we tell that to people and they're like and sometimes people are like i should have done that or people are gonna get married they're like oh we're gonna we should do that mm -hmm. and then they don't end up doing that but i was like that's fine like you don't have to think because you don't have to think the most low-key version is what's right for you what's right for you is what's yeah. right for you totally. you know yes um and, and that and, sounds trite but it's like such a fucking it's such the one thing that you gotta fucking just do exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, I think uh, I think the wedding plan. Did you ever dabble with the actual wedding and the wed wedding plan? It doesn't sound like it. No, no we question. didn't. Put, we didn't put any of that into it. Yeah. What, did Did you guys ever uh, go through that? I think when you're planning a wedding, yeah, <laughs> inevitably you get stressed out, and right. all of a sudden you're like, let's just elope. Right, it right. Always becomes a, a possibility. Got it. We got had it. we had that conversation that you had where it's like where you start pulling the thread of like, okay, just family. Okay, just a couple of friends, and we just kept. It started yeah. off with eloping. We wanted right. to elope in Baltimore because we like live here now. And then we just started pulling the thread until it was like a fucking wedding back in, exactly. in, in, in LA, Palm Springs. But yeah. yeah. So it sounds like no regrets as far as the whole elopement goes. It was perfect for us. Elopement? I mean, it, yeah. is that a word? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, yeah, that, that's, that's got to be the noun version of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you go on a honeymoon afterwards? Uh, so we did. Um, and we, we actually, my, my parents gave us some, uh, gave us like some, ca some, uh, cash and we're like, use this for a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Okay. It was like, uh, and we, so we went to, we just went to New York city cause we love New York and we're oh, like, yeah. oh, this is, yeah. this is fun. Um, but we ended up getting like snowed in, uh, we went and it, it corresponded with like the blizzard of the century or something. It was like, we were there and like the second night we were there, like mayor Bloomberg was on the news, like having a press conference about yeah. like this this record like a snowfall and was advising people not to leave their homes and mm -hmm. we've got like this five day uh new york vacation planned um so we ended up having to and then our, our flights our flight home was grounded uh -huh. so we had to stay an extra like four days wow. but then 
we didn't have a lot of money then. And so I, I like we were trying to figure out basically like logistically how to stay there and ended up having to do like this crazy like math on all my credit cards where we were literally staying in a different hotel room on a different credit card every night for four nights. Cause also too, it corresponded yeah. with new year's Eve. Like we were there around. Oh, around the new year. Wow. So like hotel rooms were hard to find and super expensive. And it was, yeah, so that was, that was I honestly, oh, and I, w- I just had like shitty, like, you know, like Adidas that I was walking around in and, and like yeah. foot deep snow and my yeah. feet were getting soaked everywhere to break down yeah. and get, and get Perfect. boots. So yeah, it was, it was kind of a SoCal kid. Exactly. So yeah, I, was kid. I, was <laughs> Dude, I still do that. I'm like two winners in and I still am like, don't even think about, you get so programmed into not thinking about the weather before going outside right. and you really have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're going into battle. Yeah. Uh, well, that sounds great. It, it, it sounds like a, a fun bonding <laughs> experience on the honeymoon to sort of right get the- <laughs> it's shitty to live through. I mean, yeah. for fuck's sake, because yeah. it's like just trying to find a hotel room in New York anyway is fucking a pain yeah. in the ass. But you add all that stuff to it. It's like, get out of here, dude. I would just I would have cried. I would have cried so hard. Did it put you guys through the ringer or was it a fun experience? <laughs> Uh, I think it was fine. I mean, I think we were like yeah. more just a little pissed off, yeah. but we weren't like, yeah. there's nothing to get mad at each other about. Yeah. It was right. just sort of like mad at the you situation. Just through it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what it was? What actually was great is like, we just, we were just went to the movies. <laughs> we went to the movies. Yeah. Like, That's great. We, Fuck yeah. we saw like eight movies. <laughs> like we just went to the movie theater. <laughs> we saw yeah. like, we'd watch two movies, then go, go to a restaurant and then go back and see another movie. Cause there was nothing else to do. Oh, that sounds like, oh, yeah, that's my dream. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my great. Dream. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah. man! I had a friend years ago who said who said they were like a, like oh yeah I saw a movie on vacation and I was like it was like to me I was like I didn't know you could do that yeah and you could like yeah. go to a movie theater oh I love like, doing that it's yeah. great My it's wife, the best uh, it's hard to it's hard to convince other people to do that because right. they're like we're yeah. in another town let's go see sites I'm like I like I did that when I was in Paris I'm like oh, I'd love to see a movie in Paris the French and their cinema and, yeah yeah and, yeah. and I saw Russell Crowe's Robin Hood and that was whatever <laughs> but I, I it was great. <laughs> <laughs> wow i had a good time um so th- and i know those movies that you saw on your honeymoon are forever like locked in as honeymoon movies probably right it was one it was uh it was the year it was the oscar year that oh wait let me let me make sure i'm getting this right i think it was the oscar year of true grit where there okay. was like all those and there were there were Ooh, there was such a, a great year it's a pretty good movie year yeah. and and there were there were a, there were a a a, a, a bunch we saw um, and you know, some of them weren't even Oscar movies. We we're just seeing whatever was in theaters, but it was yeah. great. That's great. Um, Eric, you got any, you got any, oh, I got one more question. What were you wearing when you went to the, when you did it in Vegas? We I had, I was wearing a what, what did you say? Sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> I was, I'm sorry. I, I was paying attention, but I guess Dan wasn't. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Did you already answer that? No, I didn't answer that. No, not the, oh, never mind. Yeah. The, <laughs> what did you, wait, what did you think you heard? I was like, you said that you guys were just wearing, everyone was in tuxes and what, and you guys were just wearing your like regular okay. big, like, so vacation you, clothes. Okay, so you were listening, mm. but, yeah. but we changed, uh, at, oh, we changed when we got, okay. so that was, that was at the courthouse, but then we had like, I had like a nice dress shirt and a, and a tie and she had like a nice dress, but not like traditional wedding dress and tux yeah. or anything. Right. Just, so, just like nice dress clothes. Okay. For the, for the radio priest guy. You, that was yeah exactly you that, that was okay. that was that was when we actually got married i was wearing i i might have the wedding photo on my phone i'm sure i have the wedding photo on my phone but it's gonna take me too long yeah for me to find we'll it. throw it up we'll throw yeah. it up to the wetheads after yeah. when the, when the app comes out and i was they also and stuff. also too like i got we got married and that was my impetus so like we kind of like had a, a discussion where where we're like you know what let's like not like get like sloppy and let, let, let's like take care of ourselves yeah. and so yeah. like we got married and i was very very heavy when we got married and then the year after I lost like 40 pounds, I was just like, I just got, got super into Coke. like fitness and like, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Just doing, yeah. just doing rails constantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and we, we both got like very like into like eating clean and like being, uh-huh. and she was, all, she's always been like in, um, and you know, she's got naturally very, very thin, but, um, but we just like b- both got into that. And that was like a nice thing to have as a shared activity right. once we got married yeah. too. Yeah. Totally. Because there's two of you now and you're like committed to like, you're like, man, if I fucking die, I think about this all the time. I quit smoking kind of for the same reasons. Like right. if I die fucking heart failure at 43, you are fucked. Like right. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That is sad. <laughs> you're, you're responsible for, you. we care more about being healthy for another person than we do for, for our own, for <sighs> our own sake. Right. Funny. Um, Eric, you got anything else before we get out of here? No, I don't. That was a great talk, Nick. I loved every second of it. I really did. What, Eric, where do you think the uh, the Lakers end up at the end of the year? 
this end of the year, this year? Uh, yeah, with the first LeBron year. I mean, okay, I, I'm I'm high off a summer league game I just watched where they fucking look so good. Yeah, like Caruso. LeBron's gonna love Caruso and Hart so much. Right. They've got they've got a great second unit. I'm going. So I'm going all in. I think they're gonna beat the Warriors in the wow. second round. Wow. I'm. They're gonna they're gonna be the four seed, the four or five seed. They're gonna play the late because I I have this theory where the second round is where you're gonna fucking get them because they they like they fall they're as, they were asleep last year so right. next year they're gonna be extra asleep until hmm. the first round then they destroy who they play in the first round then they get fucking bored again after that first round right like that Pelicans team should not have got a fucking game off of them last last uh sec last playoffs yeah so I think the second round and I think this time they got LeBron in the second round. It's too hard to beat them. By the time they get to the finals, they're just like, like a fucking machine. Exactly. Yeah. They're they're on all cylinders. You can't beat them in the finals. And I think the second round is where they're, they're going to do it. Wow. I, love, I, love I think this Rondo's going to be great. Rondo, Ron, I'm coming around on Rondo. I think Rondo's going to be great for Lonzo. Right. I think he's going to push Lonzo and make him a fucking beast. And I don't even. I think that Kuzma's the real deal. I think Brandon's like a fucking angel from heaven. I think they're going to fucking... And then you got Lakers got Celtics rematch? Oh, yeah, boy. and I think, if anything, I think Celtics probably beat them. I was going to say, I think, <laughs> they get to the finals. Think, you get past yeah. the use everything you got getting past the Warriors. God, that would piss me off so much. It would if, make me so angry. I would be so and fucking I would, mad. <laughs> I would, yeah, I, I would, that's get the worst in, case scenario. No, I would be... So, I think that I think that's my I think that Boston's going to be fucking insane next year. Mm. I could I could see it being a a Ewing theory in reverse situation where they're adding these guys back in these yeah. these stars back into the situation where yeah. they develop this chemistry and you know yeah. maybe people are upset about uh, their their new role in the team or something. I don't know. Who knows? Mm. Maybe they maybe Marcus Smart leaves and they miss Marcus Smart a lot. I don't know. Oh man, I want the Lakers to fucking steal him so bad. I think he's such a fucking he's yeah. such a maniac. I think he's, he's such a good expensive. maniac. Yeah, but I like yeah. him. No, I think they're done. Yeah. Do you have a hot um, take on the Lake Show? Oh boy, I you know I I mean my I I'm not gonna. This, Eric's is so much better because it's so bold. <laughs> it's pretty bold. That's my Laker. That's my Laker fan hat though. Yeah. I'm gonna, like my regular person basketball fan hat is like not gonna be probably saying that, but yeah, the roster the roster as it is now I think could probably makes the second round could make the Western Conference Finals, but tops out there. I think if there is a move that doesn't give away too much and gives gives the Lakers a healthy Kawhi Leonard, then you're you're possibly talking about a Finals team. But you know who knows? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. You heard it here I first. Can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to see him in the. I just can't wait to see him in the jersey. That's the, all I want to see. The energy is going to be insane. See him in the uniform. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be fun. Yeah. All right, Nick Weiger. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nick. Well, that was Nick Weiger, Eric. I, I feel pretty darn good about that one. Wasn't it great? Yeah. And then another great elopement. Elopement. We're still out. We're the school jury's still out on a, the word elopement. But another good, elope. It's another, like a it's like a jalopy, but a you elope. It was another good elope story. We've had a few yeah. here, and I feel like, as Nick said, if it's right for you, go for it. Because uh, if it's right for you, it's right for you, yeah. and that's the only thing that matters. Yes. LeBron is LeBron. That's it. <laughs> what's uh, what's right for you, bud? Are you, uh, how are you feeling this week? I, I I feel like we had a good one. It was great talking to you. It was a great talk, and I can't wait to get after it this this coming week and build uh, this empire, this Groomzilla's empire. I think this Bieber is going to be huge for us. I yeah. think Bieber getting engaged is going to put us over the top. Uh, yeah, and again, uh, ongoing story. Tune in next week. We'll have some more updates for you. Stay fluid, wetheads. I love you. Bye. I love you. Bye. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram, at Forever Dog Team, and liking our page on Facebook.